It was early on the morning of December 19, 1943, and the Russian Orsha offensive was in its seventh day. The 519th Heavy Tank Destroyer Battalion, swiftly advanced to the front through a forced march, ready to serve as a mobile fire brigade, in response to the ongoing offensive. Lieutenant Albert Ernst, served as the platoon leader of the Nashorn Platoon, part of the first company within the 519th. Filled with excitement, Lieutenant Ernst was about to experience his first taste of combat in the new vehicle, as he took the formidable tank destroyer into the battlefield. His training had been impeccable, leading to this great opportunity to operate the powerful Nashorn tank destroyers, armed with their much-feared 88 guns. The tank destroyer had a Panzer IV chassis, with a fixed superstructure that housed the impressive 88mm gun, giving it the resemblance of a colossal, prehistoric elephant. Lieutenant Ernst was in charge of a platoon, consisting of three Nashorn tank destroyers that day. The vehicle assigned to Ernst was named Falcon, while the other two were called Buzzard and Eagle, under the command of Holman and Fresenke, respectively. Their mission was to distribute themselves along the entire width of the Russian assembly area. Within a few minutes, the three Nashorn crews, including Lieutenant Ernst, were ready by their vehicles. With the powerful engine revving up, the three tank destroyers set off in a wedge formation, heading towards the thunderous sound of the impacting artillery rounds. The crew members stood within the open-top fighting compartment, prepared for the imminent engagement. As the artillery fire drew closer and closer, tall geysers of earth sprayed up in front of them. Frozen clumps of earth whizzed through the air, adding to the intensity of the battlefield. Lieutenant Ernst issued a command to drive straight towards the impacts. Around midday, they arrived at the village of Vitebsk, which found itself at the center of the ongoing artillery fire. Flames billowed from the village, and the biting east wind, relentlessly pushed black-yellow clouds of smoke and flames towards the three tank destroyers. Accompanied by the infantry officer, Lieutenant Ernst entered the command post, where he was briefed on the most advantageous ambush position. Afterward, he walked back into the open field. Soon, Hallman and Fresenke, the commanders of the other two tank destroyers, approached him. He proceeded to brief them about the situation, explaining that the Russians were deploying fresh divisions with the intention of capturing Vitebsk and eliminating the obstacle it posed to their front. Ernst laid out the plan, detailing that they would advance until they reached the line of hills, and then take hold-down positions on the reverse slope for tactical advantage. They proceeded as planned, reaching the line of hills and carefully positioning themselves, so that the superstructures of the tank destroyers just protruded above the crest of the rise. From this vantage point, they had a clear field of fire on the flat plain below. The three Nashorns were spread out laterally, approximately 100 meters apart. With engines switched off, they were now fully attuned to the escalating thunder and crash of the ongoing artillery barrage. Falcon to everyone, are you ready? asked Lieutenant Ernst. One after another, the commanders responded, confirming that they were ready. All of a sudden, the artillery fire intensified to a new level. Albert Ernst recognized this ominous sign, drawing from his experience during the winter of 1941-42 near Moscow and the subsequent period. He knew that the Russians were about to launch an attack. Only a handful of rounds landed close to the tank destroyers, shattering the frozen earth and sending tremors through the ground. Meanwhile, the German positions were relentlessly hammered by steel from countless guns. The grenadiers of the 14th Infantry Division had to endure a grueling 30 minutes of concentrated enemy fire. 
As the rounds rained down on the line of hills, they drew closer to the tank destroyers. One explosion occurred merely 30 meters ahead of Falcon, prompting the men to crouch low, with thick clumps of earth striking the frontal armor. Suddenly, the enemy fire ceased abruptly. Ernst raised his binoculars and scanned the distance, where he spotted dense masses of Red Army soldiers, gathered in front of the enemy-occupied village of Surash. Among them were dark compact points, that he quickly identified as Russian T-34 and KV-1 tanks. They're coming, get ready. Ernst alerted his crew, bracing for the impending attack. With the first round loaded in the breach, the gunner Sergeant Colony, roughly aimed the cannon in the direction of the advancing Soviet forces. Don't fire yet, ordered the lieutenant. Wait until we're certain we can hit one with every round. Then we'll let them have it. Standing on the platform to the left and slightly behind, the lieutenant had the advantage of the best view, but he was also exposed to the risk of machine gun and artillery fire. He glanced to his left and right, confirming that Buzzard and Eagle were prepared to unleash their firepower as well. Meanwhile, the Soviet tanks had vanished into a patch of woods, heavily scarred by shellfire. The tension mounted as they anticipated the tanks re-emerging, putting them well within the effective range of the Nashorns. The crew inside the tank destroyers could already hear the ominous, rumbling and roaring sounds of the approaching enemy tanks. The approaching Soviet tanks would soon reach the vicinity of the German main line of resistance, where the grenadiers stood prepared behind their machine guns in icy foxholes. Lieutenant Ernst positioned himself behind the telescopic sight, focused and unwavering. In an instant, he realized, this is our moment. Tanks emerged from the far end of the shattered forest strip. 10, 15, 20, and more followed in quick succession. Falcon to everyone, range 1800. Ernst commanded, as the crew members swiftly adjusted their aim and checked their targets. Fire when ready, he ordered, preparing to unleash their firepower. Sergeant Colony pressed the firing button, and the first shell roared out of the 88 long barrel. The tank destroyer rocked from the powerful recoil. This was the moment they had trained for tirelessly, and now, facing the enemy, they had to prove their mettle or face dire consequences. The round found its mark, striking the first T-34 with precision. With remarkable efficiency, the loader Sade had already prepared the next round, swiftly placing it into the breach. Flames erupted from the stricken T-34. Suddenly, the entire phalanx of attacking tanks came to an abrupt halt. Buzzard fired its gun, followed closely by Eagle's first round, the reports almost blending into one explosive burst. The tank destroyers continued to deliver their lethal blows with precision, causing confusion and disarray among the Soviet forces. The crew adjusted their aim once more, and Colony swiftly and confidently set the new range. Another correction, the target locked in the sight, and without hesitation, fire. Another shot hit its mark, striking the hull of the enemy tank. Flames engulfed the tank, as it succumbed to the powerful blow. With the adrenaline pumping, the three tank destroyers fired faster and faster. The enemy tanks retaliated, firing back and attempting to evade the dire situation. The three Nashorns, armed with their long-barreled 88s, persisted in relentlessly pouring fire into the attacking Soviet tanks. As the battle raged on, an increasing number of enemy tanks found themselves stricken and burning, or retreating back into the safety of the forest's protective darkness. 
Without warning, shells began to rain down on the high ground, indicating that the enemy artillery had found a new target. Rounds impacted dangerously close to the three tank destroyers, and chaos erupted all around them. Loader Rudolf Sate swiftly reloaded the 88. The cannon roared once more, and the spent shell casing rumbled through the spring action mechanism of the ejector, clattering onto the floor. Simultaneously, an enemy tank erupted in a spurt of flames as its ammunition detonated, transforming it into a steel coffin. Lieutenant Ernst's sole focus was on eliminating every tank that approached the German main line of resistance, trying to breach the frozen trenches or overrun the foxholes. The fighting persisted, and Ernst's clear and concise orders left no room for doubt among the men. There was absolute confidence that they would put an end to this armored assault. As darkness fell, one after another, the enemy tanks vanished, leaving eight of their comrades behind, damaged, torn apart, and inoperable. Falcon's crew had taken down six, while the other two crews accounted for one each. The Russian infantry had also pulled back. Some groups remained in no man's land before the German lines, possibly waiting for another assault. Thick clouds of smoke lingered over them, like dark memorials to their vanquished forces. Meanwhile, the Soviet troops regrouped in Sir Ash, preparing for their next move. The Germans settled for cold rations, and the tea they had carried in their canteens, was warmed up on the engine cover plates. As midnight approached, the three tank destroyers relocated to new positions on the hill, joining forces with the grenadiers for added support and defense. Five minutes past midnight, the crew members heard the unmistakable rattling and rumbling. Soon, the flickering flames from an enemy tank's exhausts came into view in the darkness. Lieutenant Ernst swiftly surveyed the terrain, confirming his suspicions, tanks were advancing, accompanied by dense masses of infantry forces, signaling a new attack from the enemy. Attention, Buzzard, engaged the one on the right flank, and Eagle, engaged the one on the left. Confirm your targets. Lieutenant Ernst issued urgent commands. Identified, reported both commanders almost simultaneously, their eyes locked on the confirmed targets. Don't fire until we're certain. Lieutenant Ernst reiterated. They patiently waited until the main body of enemy tanks came to a stop. Flames abruptly spurted from the 76mm guns of the enemy tanks, signaling their readiness for battle. Actong, at my command, fire. The 388s fired in perfect unison. The rounds howled through the air towards the enemy, striking the steel armor with immense force, disabling three tanks with a single blow. Despite their disabled state, two of the enemy tanks continued to return fire defiantly. Once more, the battlefield resounded with the thunderous blasts of the cannon, the sharp clang of shell-casing ejectors, and the deafening crashes of armor-piercing rounds piercing through steel. One of the enemy tanks boldly advanced through a depression, heading directly towards them. The first round narrowly missed its turret, passing right over it. Swiftly, the turret traversed, and the long gun swung around to face the tank destroyers. In an instant, a flash erupted from the muzzle of the T-34's gun. Two seconds later, the nearby Eagle tank destroyer was hit directly. Ernst saw the crew members from Eagle lying on the ground, and sadly, Sergeant Fresenke had been killed. Colony's second shot was spot on, as the round hit the T-34's turret directly, causing it to be blown off the tank's hull, and fall to the ground about 10 meters away. Simultaneously, Buzzard took down another T-34. With these successful hits, the enemy tank attack crumbled, 
bringing their assault to an end. The tank destroyers had destroyed six additional Russian tanks, bringing their total count to 14. Lieutenant Ernst was credited with taking down eight of them. The grenadiers cleared the area of enemy infantry, and then moved back 200 meters near the cemetery hill. They quickly left and cautiously moved into no man's land. They didn't find any Russians, and it seemed there wouldn't be any more attacks that night. The night passed, and the disabled Nashorns were restored to operational readiness. Ernst and his men received news that the entire battalion, accompanied by the Tiger Company of the 501st Heavy Panzer Battalion, had successfully destroyed 60 enemy tanks. Remarkably, Lt. Ernst's three Nashorns had accounted for 14 of these victories. After the eventful day, the exhausted crew members returned to their billets, settling onto the straw, and quickly drifting into a much-needed and well-deserved sleep. Lt. Albert Ernst earned the title, the Tiger of Vitebsk, and was awarded the Knight's Cross of the Iron Cross on January 22, 1944, for his impressive total of 55 kills, including 25 enemy tanks and several anti-tank guns. Throughout the war, Albert Ernst's kill count reached an impressive 75, making him the most successful tank destroyer in the significant winter battle for Vitebsk.